was growing up in church, we would study a lot of apologetics. We talk a lot about the reasons why we should believe that Christianity is true. And we would practice making arguments, logical or reasonable arguments for Christianity. And so one of the things we would do to kind of test or see where we were with our material is we would role play or we would have like a question and answer session where different people from the church or from the, the class would, would try to make an argument for God. You'd be assigned, okay, hey, we've been studying X, Y, and Z this week. I want you to make a compelling argument. And then another person would be assigned to just, hey, defeat this argument. You know, play the role of somebody who doesn't agree with that. Whether it's a, you know, whether it's an atheist or some other type of religious person. Just somebody who doesn't believe whatever the student is making the argument for. And we would kind of have these back and forth. And this would help us to kind of refine the arguments we were making. You know, we we're trying to help each other see the weaknesses in each other's arguments. And I would notice that sometimes certain students would get very frustrated during these times. I mean, a lot of people do, and this is normal, right? Most people, when they're arguing, they, uh, or not many people, I don't know about most, many people can get very emotionally invested to the point of anger and frustration. Uh, I think it's a, actually probably a very important skill to develop, to just learn how to have an argument without getting to the point where you're personally angry or you're taking it as a personal affront, but to be able to argue um, passionately, but without holding something against someone else. That's something that I always have appreciated about my, mine and my dad's relationship. We can argue on import, small topics, big topics, things that matter, things that don't, uh, endlessly, but in the end, we're not really holding, that's all within a, a friendship, right? Within a relationship. We're not holding those things against each other. But some of the people in church, you could see they got really um, angry that their arguments weren't working. And I think it came in some ways from a place where, you know, we had spent, we would spend so much time trying to learn uh, the evidence. And some people would start feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with the evidence. I think I, I think I know everything about the evidence and then they take it into a conversation and they'd realize that oh there was some other way something about maybe the way they framed their argument or the way they presented the evidence that allowed the other person to make an argument against them sometimes a compelling argument and uh they'd feel like man i spent all this time i i was so sure of myself but i still lost you know or i still didn't win i guess win the argument and so you'd see people get very frustrated I think there's this feeling, I think it's very natural almost to feel like this, that the right answer, if we looked at all the evidence, the right answer should be obvious. And that if you got to the right answer, you should be able to share it with people around you that everybody, because it's the right answer, everyone around you would agree. You know, so if you just understand the evidence and then you could present it to someone else, the truth is so compelling that everyone would automatically accept it no questions asked. But that's not really the case. And I think often, often if we have this attitude like, hey, if I have the truth, then it is overwhelming. It's, it's so overwhelming that everyone will accept it. And then we take it into a discussion with a coworker or we, uh, you know, we talk to somebody who's an expert in a certain field and we're trying to express to them what we think and they want to come back with another argument, a counter argument. They have their own argument for what they think and why you're wrong. Just like you might with them. And sometimes there's that feeling of like, oh, it's so defeating. How could they, do they have a point? I mean, how is it that they could have an argument? If I have the truth, how could someone else have an argument? But this is sort of the nature of arguments. No matter how strong of an argument we make, not everyone else is going to accept it. You know, the accepting of the argument, the decision to agree with someone is a decision. And ultimately, it's a decision that not everyone has to make. We still have our uh, free will is still going to come into play here. And our, our decisions are not always based purely on reason. And we all make decisions in different ways. You know, there might be people who immediately hearing a new idea are quick to accept it. Other people are slow. I, I would probably fall into one of the slower camps. So if I hear a new idea, I really want to test it. And I want to argue about it. I want to I don't want to be too quick to accept something that's going to be false. So I'm hesitant, even if I hear a good idea, to immediately go, okay, yes, we're going to do that. I might want to think about it if I have time. 
but this is the nature of arguments. And so I don't, I don't want us to be the people who get frustrated because we were like those people, those students at church when I was growing up, you know, they would study and study and they feel so confident that they knew the right, the, the truth, that they knew all the evidence. And then when they were faced with a counter argument, they were like upset. Like, how could you disagree with me? I have the truth. It was like almost un inconceivable to them that somebody would disagree. But this is something that I think if we really think about philosophically, we should expect even in like a, in our legal system or in our government. You know, one of our constitutional rights is the right to de a defense attorney, right? If you got arrested, you go to court, somebody's there to defend you. And the, the idea that we would say that everybody deserves a defense, no matter what the circumstances are, kind of suggests that there must be two sides to any argument, right? There, no matter how strong or weak the prosecution's case would be, the government is going to guarantee that you would have a defense. So even in light of overwhelming evidence, oh, it, it seems so clear that somebody did something wrong. There must be something that they could say to them defend themselves. It may be a weak argument, it may be a strong argument, but there's some argument to be made. There's no expectation that everybody would automatically agree with one side or the other. I think it, it seems like an easy thing for us to say, but it's a hard thing for us to accept. When we go into argument, if you discussions with people and we're trying to share with them what we think, I want us to, have, you know, be confident and have, you know, a positive outlook. I want us to have hope. Hey, if I go and I share my faith with someone, share the evidence for what I believe, they'll see it. They'll, they'll hear it. They'll accept it. I want us to be hopeful, but I don't want us to be frustrated if they come back immediately with another argument. And I also don't want it to cause us to second guess what we know just because someone has another argument. For literally any position that you could think of, there's probably some argument that could be made, whether it's a reasonable or strong argument, or it's a totally unreasonable or very weak argument. There's probably some argument that could be made. So if we hear someone make an argument against something we believe, we don't need to have the immediate reaction of, oh, maybe I'm wrong because they have another argument. We, I mean, it, it's possible that we're wrong, but just because someone else has an argument doesn't mean that we're wrong or that we're not doing a good job sharing our faith. So, I, you know, our duty to honor God is to tell people what we, th what we know about God and why we think it's true so that maybe they can see that God is there and wants a relationship with them. But that's the end of the duty. We don't need to become uh, angry just because somebody else has another point of view. In fact, we probably should listen to that other argument. So maybe the next time we have a conversation with that person, we maybe can say something that could overcome that argument or could help them to see, okay, hey, we heard you. You know, you brought up a good point, but here's our perspective on it. You know, we don't even have to answer necessarily in that conversation. If it's somebody we know, well, there'll, there'll be another chance. God will create another chance for us if, if that's what is needed to reach that person. I don't want us to think that the right answer must be the, the only answer that has a, a compelling argument to it. Even a wrong answer might have a lot of things that people could say in its support. Just because there's another argument doesn't mean that we're wrong. It doesn't mean, mean that the other person is right. Let's consider the other argument, but let's not waver in our confidence in where we stand just because someone else has something to say.